Hello and welcome. My name is Rob Pullen and I'm here today to, on behalf of the Gay Joe Guild, to do a, a short um, discussion on plastic, the basics of plastic art modelling. Um, most of my plastic art modelling, in fact virtually all of it, all relates to the um, making a rolling stock, but all the sort of techniques and things, the tools that I use are all just as easily used for making buildings or any other uh, things that people might want to make from plastic art. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, a few of the sort of the basic tools that I use and then um, move along on to some of the slightly more exotic tools that I've gathered over the, the, the years that I've been modelling. Uh, and then some sort of hints and tips on, on the, the basics of plastic art modelling. Start with the very, very basic things. I, uh, I use a couple of cheapo propelling pencils with half mil lead. Um, several different sizes of ruler. got uh, a short one I use mostly. Um, quite a long one for, cut, for scoring and cutting longer lengths. And I've also got one of these which I model in 7mm to the foot as, as, um, as the Gage or Guild uh, is, is sort of focused on. And this is a scale rule that allows me to um, take a, a given measurement and scale it off uh, without having to necessarily rescale the drawing, etc. So if you know the, the size of a door is um, two foot six by six foot six. You can very easily draw a door um, using the feet and inches on the on the, the scale. Um, if if you've never used a scale ruler before. Moving on from there, um, lots of things for cutting styrene. I basically use two types of Swan Morton scalpel. Um, the blades are a 10A and a 10. You can get umpteen different blades for, for Swan Morton scalpels. I've never needed to use any more than those two. Um, I also have the trusty Stanley knife just for things that are a bit more uh, robust. Another thing that I found really, really useful are these. These are squares, but they're flat. Um, I've got a couple of three inch ones and a four inch one. And they're really good for um, not only marking out, but if you try to get your um, little bits and pieces to be square onto each other or what have you, they're really, really useful. Because these ones you can fit down inside vehicles to make sure that the sides are square just by using cheapo clamps. Which brings me on to these. These are um, just really cheap plastic clamps that you get from Pound Shop for half a dozen or so. And I've got a couple of different sizes of these and I use them for clamping bits of plastic together when I'm gluing it. I use them for holding uh, squares in place if I'm trying to make things vertical. The, the, for how little they cost, they're really, really useful bits of kit. Um, and you can get them at most sort of pound type shops um, and the you know the b and m bargains the wilcos the the boys of this world um, from that a similar sort of shop i've also got quite a selection of the diamond um, nail files that uh, ladies use um, th this one's particularly useful i have a couple of these and I, I got these on the uh, the um, cosmetics counter at Boys, um, 95 pence I think it was. Um, I also used um, wooden emery boards, again the type that the ladies use. And one of the great things about these is that, you, as you'll notice with this one, I've chopped it down a bit to fit in a slot. You can just with, with the aid of a scalpel or your sand knife, you can just create whatever shape you want. Um, cheapest chips, you know, 60p for a pack of God knows how many. Uh, so you can make sort of 
very precise files for doing a, certain, you know, a specific job should you, should you need to. Um, from there, moving on with my little armoury, um, I've got a selection of pin vices which are not only good for gripping um, small drills, but they're also really good for gripping pieces of tube and rod. So if you want to cut a precise length of plastic rod, um, all you do is grip it in your, uh, your pin vise, measure off the, the length that you want, and then it's really easy just to pop your scalpel blade to the edge of there, just roll it round a few times and snap, and you get a precise length of rod cut very easily, or tube, without it being... Um, if you're like me, I tried cutting uh, pieces of tube and, and rod and just try, by, try to slice it through in one go and it always winds up coming out at an angle. And I think that's to do with the fact that there's a the pitch on the blade where it's been sharpened. So the use of a pin vise to roll it round makes it very, very easy. You can, of course, if, you, if you're just doing just really short lengths, just place it on your cutting mat and roll it um, and it'll cut off a nice uh, precise length as well. Um, I just find it a little bit easier oops, to use the uh, um, the pin vise. I've also got um, an Archimedes type pin vise which is good for really fine drills and you can use it quite precisely for, for drilling um, and it just sort of pops backwards and forwards. I have a second one of these that's actually got a return spring on it but uh, I've not got it to hand at the minute. The next thing um, that I use lots of, and this is just a selection of the pairs of tweezers that I've gathered over, over time, especially for putting really small parts on. What, what you do need is some quite rigid um, tweezers. I, I've got several other pairs of tweezers, but they're actually really too flexible for... You, you get hold of something and by the time that you've sort of got hold of it, it's sprung out of the way because they're very flexible at the ends. So you're better off... Um, with some that are, they've got a bit more stiffness about them so that you can use them to grip things. Not, not really necessary, but another tool that I find really useful, particularly for making holes. Once you've drilled a hole, if you want to make a hole a bit bigger, is um, one of these bro sort of tapered brooches. Really good for enlarging holes in styrene, particularly if it's thicker styrene. You can just keep working your way through it. Um, and this this is a cheap and cheerful one that I'm not even sure where I got it from, but they're not. You can buy them for very little money off these cheap tool stalls or markets and things like that. Um, and another couple of cutting devices. That you, you'll you'll have heard people talk about scrawkers uh, potentially. This is a this is what's known as an alpha cutter, but to my make a very similar one and you can get several different types of this. Um, they, they sell them on eBay for window fitting, um, but if you, just, if you just do a search for Alpha Cutter, I think I paid about eight pounds for this one, uh, and it's got some spare blades in it. I never needed to change the blade, and not only do I cut styrene with this, I also cut sheets of brass with it, um, just by scoring and snapping. The beauty about cutting sheets of styrene with this blade as opposed to a scalpel blade is that this actually removes a sliver of plastic whereas your scalpel blade or your Stanley knife blade ultimately all it does is it forces the plastic aside and creates a little shoulder so depending on what you're doing you might find that you've got to sand off the shoulder before you start sticking other bits to it otherwise your measurements are not quite as smooth as what you thought they'd be. Um, as an example I work qu quite a lot with plastic yard and I tend to, because I'm making vehicles, I tend to laminate um, three layers of thin plastic yard rather than using a single layer of thick stuff. And this is because uh, the, la the laminated plastic art is much stiffer than the 
um, a single sheet. But the thing to remember when laminating plastic card is that you need to have an odd number of laminations. So either three or five and this um, reduces the tendency to warp. Just to give a, a, another little example, these are W irons that I've made and they are really quite rigid and they're a central layer of half mil styrene with a layer of 0.25 mil styrene either side of it and they, they work quite adequately in a similar, similar way to the Parkside type W irons um, and they are really quite rigid. I've got several vehicles that, that run quite happily with them and I'll be doing that on, on all my future vehicles that require it that I that don't have um, W irons, you know, if I haven't got any cask ones or things like that. Um, to laminate uh, plastic card, I uh, layer each, rub off all the burrs, which there's still some on that side that I can feel, so just a slight rub with my nail file, just gets rid of it. And then what I have is a sheet of glass that's got two pieces of aluminium strip. The, these particular sheets of glass are uh, cupboard shells from B&Q and the aluminium strip was also bought at b &Q. It's stuck to the glass just with normal PVA. The, I have these just for demo purposes because I, I demo at shows but what I use normally is I've got a couple of fridge shelves, redund redundant fridge shelves so if ever you're throwing a fridge away just keep the glass shelves Stick a piece of uh, aluminium strip on the bottom and you've really got the basis for um, somewhere to, to glue your laminations. Place a piece on, paint it all over with glue, place your next piece on, making sure that they are square up, because this one um, doesn't seem to want to sit square. And again, place the third one on. So your next piece of glass on the top and then this is where your little plastic clamps come in clamp those together and leave overnight to dry now next question to answer is glue um, because I work with quite thin styrene the, the traditional um, although I do use plastic weld and I do use um, mech which one I can get it out this is a mech pack bottle but it's actually got um, some um, mech that I bought uh, a litre of from uh, from eBay because I just find it much cheaper to uh, to buy it by the litre um, I do use those occasionally if, I, if there's something that's quite thick and sh I'm struggling with but what I tend to use most of all, again it's in a it's in a little uh, X plastic well bottle, is delimonene. Again, you can you can get this from the traditional hobby suppliers like Hobby Holidays, Eileen, Squires, but again I buy it by the litre from, from eBay, which works out much, much cheaper. It's a much, much milder solvent than your plastic welds and your mech. And what, what I find particularly with, with either plastic weld and mech, when I'm using 10 thousand styrene, which I use quite a lot for detailing, it's very thin, but has a bit of a tendency to melt it. Whereas delimonene doesn't. It's quite mild. It smells very nice. It smells of oranges. So not, it doesn't have that acrid sort of spirit smell that you get with, uh, with the likes of plastic weld and um, mech but it's also got a bit more working time so you can put it on, you can adjust it unlike mech that just sort of instantly grabs but on the flip side of that it takes a lot longer to dry so that hence the leave it overnight so you need to sort of plan out what you're doing and 
make your parts up. You can, under your sheets of glass you can put multiple pieces once you've done your first piece you can slide that over and put another piece in the corner and slide it over. Um, so you, you've just got to sort of plan out a bit what, you, what you're doing before you, um, you do it uh, so that you're not sort of waiting for everything but as with, with lots of things that we do in modelling it's, uh, it's do a bit of work wait for your glue to dry, wait for your paint to dry or um, that type of thing. Um, getting onto some of the sort of slightly more exotic but also very useful bits of kit. I do make use of this um, and this is a, just a, it's a circle cutter. Again I bought it from the stationery department of one of these pound type shops uh, but really useful for cutting circular discs. It's got, it's got a blade on there and you just Pop it on and I think I paid £1.50 for it. Uh, I've got a couple of these. Um, and I've also got one of these which is really really useful for cutting multiple lengths of if you want um, to say for example you wanted to make um, a ladder out of styrene and you wanted to cut all the uh, the rungs all the same length this allows you to cut multiple pieces of the same length by setting these um, side pieces you can cut at angles you've just got to think about how your angle works because it all works a bit in reverse to how you'd, you'd expect it to work but you can you can just put your ruler on measure pop the blade down, put your ruler on, measure from the blade to get the exact length and you can just then use it as a, as a mini guillotine to cut multiple lengths. I've had this for probably, I don't know, maybe five years or more and I'm only on the second blade. So although you can change the blade and the single sided razor type blades um, that you, again you can get from eBay they are, they do last a long time um, and to be fair while, while you can use these things, these are the little guides, also these things work just as well and you can put them on if you want to sort of cut something uh, that's a bit, a bit more robust because it, it doesn't have the same tendency to move. Um, these I think I paid about £40 for this so it's not, not the cheapest sort of item but it certainly for me it, it's earned its money and I believe you can get spare cutting mats for it again I've not really needed to buy a spare cutting mat for it um, another particularly for people who are building buildings but I use it for, for building vans and things is this little device um, it's called a Kaufman clamp and it's brilliant for um, sticking pieces together to create corners. So if you were to wanting to glue a building together or uh, a van, or I'm doing this very, very sort of quickly and very crudely, but if you take time, you can set your uh, your joint up quite uh, quite securely and very square and then you can just paint down the inside with the adhesive uh, and again leave it to set. Um, I bought this one from a company called Finney and Smith but I, who I believe are no longer in business um, but I'm sure there will still be suppliers out there because I can't imagine that they, they don't make them anymore. Um, I also make extensive use of, and this is just a very small sort of selection of my stock of plastic. Um, I use Plastruct uh, in various sections. These are sort of rectangular sections. I've got different types, tube and evergreen um, for rod and, and again different types of sections. Um, you can get some very precise pieces and if they are the pieces, that, if the, the, the bits that suit what you want, they're brilliant. Obviously it saves a lot of cutting, there's no point um, 
cutting great big chunks of styrene if you can already buy some that are the right shape unless you want thousands of them or, or something like that and it works out too expensive because they're not the cheapest things in the world to buy uh, in fairness they're about sort of a fiver a packet um, or, or possibly slightly more once you've laminated your pieces they come out looking like that now these particular pieces are for uh, a North British Railway um, yeast van I believe uh, the beauty about laminations is that you can make uh, louvers that actually work. If you look at that and then I tilt it very slowly that way, you, can, you should be able to see through it. Um, this is because on the outer layer I put the, um, the holes and then on the next layer I moved them up half a millimetre and then on the final layer I moved them up another half a millimetre which then allows you to sort of have something that looks flat on the front but then like I say as you tilt it, it actually gives you a proper lamination now this particular piece I probably laminated them about two years ago and I've been using them on my demo stand uh, never actually getting round to uh, assembly that's the ends of the van and this is a yeah, another van that I made quite some time ago that's had, it's literally just been held together like that, that. There's, it's had no bracing whatsoever and because it's not really fastened to a base or anything there is an ever so slight sort of bit of uh, movement there but again it's, it's been like that for a couple of years um, and those are the doors for it uh, ultimately my plan is that I'm going to make it so that the doors actually slide open hence the detail on the inside um, I just haven't got that far yet <laughs> with, with, with a lot of uh, projects in styrene you can sort of knock things up fairly quickly but if other things sort of grab your attention then um, it's not a big expense to pop on one side um, this is a, the body of a, a North British Railway CCT um, you may wonder do I model the North British Railway and the answer is no I model the LNER but I started reading the Tatlow volume of LNER models um, and I just happened to pick up the, uh, the Scottish volume first uh, and work my way through quite a few of the drawings in there this, uh, this is really quite rigid and again it's made out of three um, three layers of 20 thou uh, or half mil styrene um, with bracing pieces down it made out of the same material and this again has been put, put together like this for probably two or three years uh, it's quite quite significant so it, it's it's a very rigid way of making um, your, your styrene pieces now I know that there are other people who prefer to use thicker material and then use triangular braces in the corners to hold them together um, but I'm sort of just passing on you know what, what I found works for me um, I'd like to sort of end this session because I've got a sort of a, a limited amount of time but I'm just sort of showing you a few of the things that I've actually made from styrene um, this is a, a, a former London North Western Railway line wagon um, every bit of it apart from the buffers, the wheels uh, and the axle boxes and uh, brake gear and things are all made from scratch using styrene um, the, uh, that's the very first vehicle that I made uh, that I scratch built in styrene um, many of you will know me from my demos at um, Doncaster and Gildex and places like that uh, for demonstrating my silhouette cutter which I use these days to um, create a lot of the parts that I use for, for scratch building this was entirely cut freehand everything um, it, I made it before I uh, got a silhouette cutter so um, I'm quite pleased with that uh, just, just to sort of demonstrate some of the things that you can do with a silhouette cutter again this is almost entirely built out of styrene 
The only bits that are not built out of styrene, uh, scratch built, are the axle boxes, the springs and the brake levers and the, um, the V-hangers uh, and, the, and the brakes themselves. Everything else, all the saw bar detail, the saw bars, the tank, uh, even the tube at the top that uh, the lid fits on, all the pipe work underneath, the, the under frame, it's all made from styrene. Um, all bits of tube and rod and sheet. Uh, they, although this demo isn't specifically about the silhouette cutter by any means, or, I don't know whether you can see, but on the top there, all the rivets, uh, if you can pick them out in the light, are all cut by the silhouette cutter. Um, on this model, the the, uh, the little container, which is an air container, um, again all the, the bodywork. On this one, all the axle boxes, the springs, uh, sorry not the axle boxes, the W irons, the springs, the spring hangers, everything apart from the buffers and the wheels uh, have been made. and been, I believe the brakes on this one are parkside, but I have made my own brakes as well using the silhouette cutter. Um, so you're only limited by your imagination when using styrene. Um, and this is one that I've literally finished in the last week. This is an implant, Northeastern Railway implement wagon. Again, completely scratch built in styrene. The only bits that are bought in are the buffers, the um, the axle boxes came from spares from the Jim McGowan kit, the wheels, um, the brake lever and the lever guard are just made from strips of brass that I bent up and drilled holes in. Um, so I'm really quite pleased with that, it's turned out quite nicely. It's uh, certainly slightly different to the, the kit that Jim produces but, but certainly comparable and I, I'm pretty sure that if I hadn't sort of said, yeah, this is made out of styrene, that most people wouldn't guess that it is. Well, thank you very much for uh, dropping by and watching. I hope it's been of some use to you. And I hope to see you again at a guild show.